can't tell me the next new big drug is something out of a flipping light bulb. You don't have to deal with any of that. Life's just racing by and you just don't even know. And I feel like I've lost like, you know, five years. I can't even remember those five years. Being a working girl and getting into drugs and being in abusive relationships does harden somebody up. I was in control, I felt, at the time, and so that made me feel very much in control. It really sat well with my personality, with my goals. You'll see the serious side of it and the bad side of it if you get in debt. On the surface it looked alright, but it, it just wasn't, and um, I, was, I was seriously worried. Striving to get to that high again was just impossible. You could never, I could never even experience that, at that first high again. And I had my first puff, and um, I remember <laughs> I was just sitting there, and my face was like this, having a smoke, and then like instantly, like as soon as I'd finished it, I, my face just broke out into this huge fucking smile, eh? like I was just beaming. They introduced it to me at a work do, and they were really respectable. They had money, and they were wearing suits, and like they weren't, they didn't look like people who were sort of losers, and so I thought, well, well, that's who I want to be, and, and if they can do it, I can. I ended up getting a, um, a boyfriend that smoked it quite on, on a regular basis, and that's when I became like an everyday user and spending all my money and more money than what I had, and um, it just came from there. And then I broke up with him and got with my current partner, and um, we started um, getting big lots up north and, yeah smoking a lot more and it just kind of, yeah, it went, went from a point a day to a gram a day in, in the matter of months, really. From gangs, I started off in minor drugs, doing, dealing pot, stealing cars, that sort of thing. Um, and pretty much at the age of 18, I was introduced to what people know as pee now, but Back then it was speed. The needle thing I was using every day was quite short lived, it was only for about seven or eight months, but then I was occasionally get back into needles and relapse, but I'd do it very secretly and I wouldn't tell anyone, but people knew because they could just tell with the change in me, and, and then my arms, obviously. You look at a lifeline, if someone gave me a lifeline right now, in that moment, if I had my lifeline, would I'd just draw the big black cloud, you know, that's where the storm was starting to brew. That was it for me, you know. I think if you thought about anything that you own or possess, then addiction will take that. It, it doesn't care about your financial status, it doesn't care about your educational background, it doesn't care which family you were born into, it doesn't care about your colour, uh, you know, whether you're Polynesian, European, uh, it makes no distinction. But it was just the norm, it was just... You know, you were awake for two weeks and then you'd crash and it didn't matter where you were, what you were doing, you'd just crash. And um, I'd crash and I'd crash for a whole day and night and then I'd wake up and there'd be people in my lounge and I'd be like, oh yep, and then um, a pipe would go around again and that would be me for another two weeks and then I'd crash again. And it was like that for a long time. My life was work. I just worked and worked and worked. I worked seven days a week as well and so I remember going to sign up deals with clients and I'd been nightclubbing all night. I'd um, just rushed home, had a quick shower, I was even going <laughs> and I remember one guy, he said, this is the fastest contract I've ever signed because I'd just be going, right, sign here. <laughs> I talk fast anyway, but it's amazing how fast I could talk. It all went from petty crime graduating into the bigger scale of crime, you know, the kidnappings, the uh, bashing people, the meth. I used to cry myself to sleep most nights and just thinking, I need to fucking stop. But I didn't know how, and because of the amount that I smoked, I thought, fuck it, it's going to take me so long to get over this. I think for a year there was a time where I, wouldn't, I didn't have a day without it. It was, it was breakfast, lunch and dinner. And um, I went down to 46 kilos. I wasn't looking good, I looked sick. 
the stuff that I was into and the people, the types of people that could come around. Um, my partner was just like, you know, you have to have something, you know, you need to use something. And I was like, give me a switchblade then. And he's like, you won't use a weapon, but you use a, a switchblade. And I'm like, yeah. And um, we had this massive argument and I ended up flicking the switchblade and slit my wrist. You know, that was it. More gear so I could f know I could wake up tomorrow and still have gear in my pocket because that was always the dreaded thing. I can't go to sleep because I've got nothing left in my pocket and I don't want to do those days anymore. So it was like, keep going, man. You just keep going. When I knew people stopped doing it socially is when people would ring me up and they go, oh, can you come around? We want a grand. Sweet, where are you? We're in city life, okay. Go to city life. Next morning, five hours later, ring me up again. We want two more grants. Sweet, I'm going around. This would go on for days on end. And I did challenge her a couple of times. I said, I think you're taking drugs. No, absolutely not. And, and no, 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 you know, and, and the more I, th I tried to say to her, I'm really worried, I think you were doing this, she was like, lie, lie, lie. And, and, and suddenly you, you start noticing things like the skin was getting bad, scabs and hollow, you know, and getting thin and greedy, you know, just no care about her appearance. I thought, this isn't good. Before I was taking drugs and not working, and now I'm taking drugs and I've got a job. And I lost about, I lost about seven or eight different jobs, all in the space of about nine months. There were still people driving around in cars from car park to car park, and that was their life. They're like texting me, yeah, meet me at this car park, and then they fucking meet there and they smoke crack, and it's like, meet me at this car park, meet there and sell some weed or buy this stolen item. And, and it's like, when you think about it, when you fucking zoom out and you look at it and you follow their fucking car, all their life is, is driving to different fucking car parks and people's houses doing drugs and buying drugs and stealing things. And it's like, is that fun? Out five nights of the week, home, sleeping for two, out five and nine nights of the week, just trying to get that one more big one, you know? Get that one big one to pay him off and him off and I'll get more, boom, 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 boom. Never happening. My trial was on telly, my sentencing. So the worse it made me look, the better it made me look for the boys, you know. I go back and, yeah, yeah, you know, the, oh, we seen you, yeah, yeah, you know, the cheer, cheer at night. But now it was like, well, I look back and my parents have got it on DVD for me and they've now shown me. And I'm going, oh, fuck. You know, what, what sort of guy was I? The night before we got arrested, there was me and my partner and someone else in the room and I said, you know, the police are going to come and get me soon. And I used to actually hope that they would. So it would be over. I just thought they were boring. It was just like, nah. Because, you know, you'd go around and have coffee with someone that didn't use and it was just like, oh, fuck, can you just hurry up and fuck off because I want to pull my pipe out? Like, that was just what it was like, it was just like, oh, you're just boring, it's just like I want to have a pipe with my coffee, not have a coffee and, and chat. I became really lonely because all the stuff that you do at the clubs, it's all just, yeah, let's dance, let's dance, let's dance, but there's no real deep stuff that happens. And so even though I had a lot of people around me, it was all a bit of a false life. Myth took me from being emotionally quite a sensitive person to just being, uh, yeah, I don't know, an arsehole, I suppose. She's allowed to have the harder emotions, but we're not allowed to express anger or, or anything. You know, it's, it's, she, she controls it. And so it's very hard for us because, you know, we can't say to her, actually, Prue, you completely fucked up our lives for three years. But she said to me, I remember when I met you, you were wearing a hoodie and I said hello to you, and you just dis dismissed me like I wasn't even there. And all I remember thinking was that, she, she, she goes, all I remember thinking was, wow, that's a tough, angry boy. You know, and that's funny, because I remember during that, during that time, I didn't think that that's how people saw me. I didn't know that people were looking at me and being worried. At the time, I thought it was, you know, oh, the best thing to, to do. And then halfway through, I realised that, no, this is actually a pretty shitty lifestyle when you've got 
all these random people in your lounge 24-7 coming to your house, you know, any time, day or night, they'd turn up, rock on up at 3 o'clock in the morning. It didn't matter, you know, there was always people in my lounge, girls, you know, little ho-hos that I'd call them, pee-hos, they'd come round and flaunt themselves and, you know, think they thought it was a really cool lifestyle. Oh, I'd love to be with a drug dealer and I'm just like, well, it's not that fun, but yeah, anyway. There's an underlying special aspect about Peru that is um, very heartwarming and that, that really broke my heart to see that cold, her becoming cold and hard and distant. In the next six months was pretty much my hell, in a way, to, to get to my rock bottom, which, you know, I think I hit a couple of rock bottoms, but still thinking I was okay, you know, I'm not the addict because I'm not putting a needle in my arm, or I'm not the alcoholic because I haven't got the brown paper bag in the gutter. I'm not those things, I haven't really got a problem. I lost everything. I lost my daughter, I lost my family, I lost my respect. I lost my reputation, I lost, I lost my whole house, I lost all my furniture, my belongings. I lost my health, I lost half my teeth. <laughs> doing this course about leadership and you know trying to create a life for myself but behind closed doors in the background I'm smoking up and doing drugs and I just felt like like I was a bullshit artist like I was pulling the wool over people's eyes you know trying to provide an example but what you don't know about me is I'm a drug addict well I did it because I wanted extra help and then I think my partner I don't know I think in the beginning I think he just did it to make it look good for court and then I think after he'd been there and he actually realised, oh, this is, yeah, shit, I do have a problem. Because at the beginning he was not so, oh, drugs, you know, I don't have a problem with the drugs, da 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 It's, you know, it's, it's not the drugs, it's just how much you use them. And I'm just like, oh, and then near the end it was just like, nah, okay, I do have a problem with drugs. So, yeah, it helped him out heaps. It helped both of us out, really. We did a map of our offending and I was looking at it and pretty much my chart could tell me what lives I'd ruined and at what point in my time I'd ruined them. And it was, a, it was the slippery slope at the end of the day. And by the time, you know, I'd got to the bottom, I was standing there I wasn't throwing rocks, I was shooting a gun, you know. I, I looked at it when I got out of rehab and where I am today is I, I, I was back at kindergarten, you know. That's how I look at it. I look at it like that. I look at it as of having to start life again, you know, because I've had to learn to communicate, to talk to the guy at the dairy without being on to talk to anyone without being on. People want recovery because it's about getting on with your life. It's about having a life. If it wasn't that, then no one would be in it. You know, I wouldn't be coming up to 19 years clean if I thought this sucks. You know, I'd be doing what I did in the old days. It took a while, lots of bags of lollies later, and you know, heaps of blackouts and stuff, but it, I finally came right and, yeah, and haven't really looked back. You know, I believe I'm an addict. <laughs> you don't have to tell me that twice. Um, you know, for me, I believe um, God, God's re removed me from the obsession to use, but at the same time to use drugs, because I don't use it all, but I don't feel like I want to use it, the feelings, but, you know, I still have those addictive behaviours. You know, people say, well, what's wrong? What's happening in your life? And you say, well, actually, this is what's happening in my life. And, and you need to understand that I'm dealing with a daughter mm. who's drug addicted and I'm raising my granddaughter and, you know, all of these things. And, do you know, it was so liberating to, be able to, to, to make the decision to talk about it. I just need to learn to deal with situations because I'm not used to it. Like, you know, the bank rang up last week and, oh, the loan hasn't gone through. And I'm like, fuck, and I get real stressed out and I just can't handle quick things like that. So I'm just learning to deal with all that sort of stuff again and... Can't throw my toys out of the cot every time something bad happens, and it happens to everyone. You know, I don't need medication to try and make my brain any different. There is hope. There is well, there is life. There is hope. And be strong. You can do it. 
every journey, I know it's like a, one of those sayings, but every journey starts with the first step. Just take the first step and just live in today. You don't have to say, oh, it's going to take me 10 years or three years. Just live in today and get through today and learn what you can from today. And you're going to grow and you're going to get there.